Welcome, irradiated wretches, to my third Fallout Precon review and upgrade guide for Mutant Menace. I won't make you wait until the end. This is a win straight out of the box and my favourite precon of the three I have reviewed so far. A unique take on Mill that denies our opponents resources and has them losing life in small bursts, acting as a subtle tidal value engine. Rad counters come and go like a temperamental rad storm. Solid A plus on flavour there. And this engine supports an interesting take on plus one plus one counters while all being tied together by our insect mutant commander. While most of the upgrades I will present to you are one for one simply better swaps, some of the new cards are essential to solve two weaknesses in our otherwise solid game plan. When reading the wise Mothman's text you probably skipped over the flying part because obviously moths do be fluttering in your face at 3am when you turn the bathroom light on, but across all four precons there are only 14 artifact and creature cards with a mention of flying and six of those are already in this deck. Good to know when you're having a precon only battle. So let's look at an improvement to the deck straight off with Skate Wing Spy. It has the right creature type, there are mutant synergies in this deck, and lets our creatures with plus one plus one counters take to the skies, negating weakness one of this deck. Because for all its fancy new rad counters and rampant mill, it still wins with smash and bash buff bodies and skate wind takes them over the top of our opponent's defenses. More upgrades to help smash face coming later, but first, an important thing to note. It is unlikely we will win with radiation counters and there are two reasons. Number one, these are small incremental bursts of damage and value. And two, the subtle differences in who and how they target. There are 18 cards, including the wise Mothman, that distribute rad counters and only six distribute these to each player. The top end of this being Bloatfly Swarm, Nuclear Fallout and Feral Ghoul. Eight only target one player and the final four target us only. And there's a whole range of ways they are made through combat damage, sometimes it's landfall, sometimes it's whether we're being attacked. It's still fantastic tension, what will get milled, will I reveal non-land cards when I mill, am I at two life, oh no that's game over but it'll be the plus one plus one counters that get us the win. However if you time casting Mothman on a wide board of our own creatures, when we have a rush of rad counters say from a huge feral ghoul dying and then milling starts happening each turn, that's going to pump our team considerably. From lowly cathedral acolyte to hulking super mutant in the blink of a gammy infected eye. The milling of cards does however synergize with five cards in our deck. One is Mothman and the others are his mutated children. Glowing one negates lost life when we mill due to radiation and gains us life when opponents start glowing green. We also have a quasi bloodgar style creature. Seems you can't keep a good rad roach down. My Lurk Queen draws us a card and adds a plus one plus one counter to itself and Screeching Scorch Beast creates zombies that synergize with Hancock Ghoulish Mare and Jason and bright ghoulish prophet. In fact, this sub theme led to my second upgrade to DC Brood Tyrant. It has mill, it has zombies, and it has the look of a creature we might encounter in the wasteland. We also have four options to retrieve milled cards, extending our hand into the yard, as all good Salti decks do. Find Finality has retrieval for creatures and plus one counter options. Raoul Trouble Shooter is Demir Mill Muldrotha. Tato Farmer returns milled lands. The Master Transcendent recruits milled bodies. And Young Death Claws even reuse milled bodies with scavenge to unite mill and plus one counters together. Speaking of buffs, a massive 21 cards put plus one plus one counters on different targets. Ten put them on themselves, shout out to Lily Bowen who cycles through counters, doubling over turns until she gets to 32 power and then you remove all but one gaining 31 life. Equip power fist onto her or other creatures for bigger buffs quicker or onto our flying commander or the feral ghoul for a huge payout of rad counters. Nine other cards put counters onto a single target. My standout being Piper Wright, whose investigations lead to more clues, leading to more cards drawn and more buffs, and then more targets. Among the two cards that can put counters onto multiple bodies, we have Marcus Mutant Mare. Coming through with the card draw and the buffing, these are excellent, interesting designs. You are still left with bodies easily blocked by opponents, however, even if they've been buffed further with proliferate cards or extra counters from the many hardened scales effects in the list. So we have two other upgrades that join Skatewing Spy, Herald of Secret Street dreams and Champion of Lampholt. Both proven game enders in plus one counter decks. The excellent ramp and draw packages in the deck mean a steady stream of creatures to trigger the champion while we put counters onto it. Hey presto, unblockable army. And the Herald and Lily Bowen were made for each other, especially at the height of Lily's mania. So I've shared four of my 10 ins. Let's look at the outs. Three of these are simply lands from 39 down to 36. We get rid of Temple of the False God, obviously, and two of the Scry Temples. We also took out Alpha Deathclaw, 
and casualties of war. Not because they are bad cards. Deathclaw can in fact destroy two permanents over two turns, but that is a significant mana investment and casualties has that double green, double black in its casting cost. So I swapped in Toxic Deluge and wave goodbye. Toxic can undercut a board of buffed creatures to get rid of opponent's boards and keep ours intact. And wave goodbye will be what the rest of the pod will see as we scoop up our cards after we've crashed in with our unblocked creatures, you know, as they've all got their creatures in their hands. Now that we have a number of ways to get our creatures in for the win, biomass mutation can go. I can just see us having bigger creatures with our counters than this X spell could produce. Harmonize is out, bread for the hunt is in. It's Mayor Marcus's enchantment redundancy and will draw us more than three cards over the entire game. And it pains me to say goodbye to Lumbering Mega Sloth, but it was the first card I took out. Comes into play tapped, it's a basic 8-8 trampler. It's sad to see him depart, but he can take the strength bobblehead with him, which would be great in a deck with more bobbleheads, which I'm building at the moment. And maybe they could catch a lift in Recon Craft Theta, which has also had to be removed to make room for my last three ins. I really wanted to touch more protection for our board, so on theme, Silk Guard, see the moths in the art, and Repulsive Mutation, which provide hexproof and a counter spell respectively. And finally, yes, I put this in my Caesar deck, but if we're milling a bunch of cards, we will want Living Death to bring them back and it can act as a board wipe. If you've enjoyed this humble free content today, a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. Every deck I've reviewed so far has been better than the one before, which must mean science is going to be astonishingly good. That review and upgrades arrive on Thursday. I'm off to watch the wise Mothman continually bang into the light fitting in the middle of my room whilst I point at a nearby open window. Thanks for watching, I've been Lee and this has been MTG Specs. Thank you.